Okay. Yeah, my name is uh, Martin Callanan. I'm uh, chairman of the European Conservative Group in the European Parliament, and I'm a British Conservative uh, Member of Parliament. And my name is Dirk van Epping. Uh, I'm uh, Dutch. I'm vice president of the uh, Group of European Conservatives and Reformists. Uh, it's my fifth uh, CPAC already, and I'm always curious to see what's going on in the conservative movement. And what are you seeing here at CPAC, and, and what is it that brings you here over and over again then to, to, to be a part of this community? Well, it's good to um, you know, hear different kinds of uh, conservative views and, and uh, see what the conservative movement, how it's responding to its defeat in the, in the election on this side of the Atlantic. Wait, 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 you, wait, wait, we didn't, the conservative movement didn't have a candidate in, the, in, this, in this last election. Are you talking about Mitt Romney? <laughs> okay, the Republicans oh, lost okay. in the election. And, and you, sir? Well, I come here to see um, how the new generation looks like. I think it's the first time that it's really the presentation of the new generation. Um, I was particularly impressed by the speech of Scott Walker. Uh, I think he's a governor with a very broad appeal and with political skills that uh, can bring him further than, uh, than Wisconsin. And do you think that there's a, a global understanding of, of what it means to be conservative? Uh, obviously, there's, there's differences, but you know, if, if the American conservative movement is, is maybe the, the center of, of mass for that, is, is the American understanding of conservatism what's, what's generally accepted, at least in Europe, do you think? Sure. The idea of you know, small government, um, uh, lower taxes, uh, private entrepreneurship, freedom, etc., they're all common. Um, I think it's fair to say that in Europe we take a, a slightly different view on social issues. We're not as, uh, as sort of gung-ho on social issues that the American, a lot of American conservatives are. We're much more libertarian in that respect. I think particularly the issue of uh, gun ownership is very hard to explain in, uh, in Europe and <laughs> we'd rather stay away from it um, because of uh, everything that happens. Uh, it's uh, for, uh, for Europeans very hard to understand why the gun issue is so important in the minds of Americans. So to you personally, what does it mean to be a conservative? Exactly what I said earlier, it's, um, it's limited government, it's, uh, it's low taxes, it's private entrepreneurship, personal freedom and all the, the issues that spring out of that. You know, it's about more the individual taking more responsibility for themselves in society and, uh, and not expecting the state to do it on their behalf. Close enough for you too, sir? Yes, it's uh, precisely the same. It's all uh, economic motivations and I would like to add uh, fiscal discipline is very important. Uh, we've lacked it in Europe for uh, over a decade. The United States is now making the same mistake and you'll find out there are limits to spending. So what is freedom? <laughs> I mean, obviously there are limits to it, you know, my, the, the freedom for me to swing my arms round ends when it connects with your nose. Is that the only limit? No, I mean, I, that's a sort of slightly facetious example, but of course. Oh, I think that's a great example. Yeah. There, there, there are also, um, you know, economic limits as well, but the, the idea is to construct a society with the maximum amount of uh, personal freedom, but you know, there is always an element of responsibility in there as well, that you ought to take responsibility for your own actions, live within your means, and, uh, and you know, do your best for your, for your country and for your movement. So you believe in limited government and limited freedom. What are the principles by which then you, you find it appropriate to, to limit freedom if it's the ability, like you said, to, to swing your, your fist or to exercise the, the right to own yourself? What, what are the principles for limiting it under the conservative worldview? Well, of course, it's very difficult, isn't it? It depends what example you look at. I mean, I know there's a debate over here about uh, the amendment of your constitution about free speech. You know, to what extent is it desirable to limit free speech? So, you know, the example we always quote is, you know, is it, are you free to walk into a crowded cinema and shout fire? Well, that's fraud. That's, that's, your, that's, your, that's, that's freedom of speech. Yeah. But you know you're causing mass panic that uh, that could get somebody injured. So uh, you know, of course we want the maximum freedom of speech possible. We want no curbs on the on the media or the press. Um, we and you know it's uh, you know it was Voltaire who said that uh, you know I never agree might not agree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. And uh, but there are always examples that uh, that stretch our limits. And it's about finding the right balance in all the circumstances. And what is government? Government uh, by nature has to be limited to be successful. Uh, it has to take care of a couple of core tasks in the inner society, but it should not have the ambition to try to do everything. And it cannot have the ambition to make all people happy. Uh, and all, very often big government is, is precisely trying to do that. That's a mistake that we have made in, in Europe with the welfare states. And I have to observe that uh, uh, the American federal government is doing precisely the same.
Well, a, a technical definition of government would be the monopoly on force, which is an inherently limiting of, of freedom. So if, if we want to maximize freedom, shouldn't we be striking, uh, you know, seeking to learn from the experiment uh, of, the, of the American Democratic Republic, where we started with the smallest government and it was limited by the Constitution to those relatively specific purposes, and next thing you know, we are where we are today. It seems like if you have a, a little cancer, it's still going to eventually become a, a big cancer, no? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, if we have a long debate about the limits of personal freedom, the extent of government, uh, etc. You know, most people agree that the first duty of government is to defend the nation, um, you know, provide law and order, police force, etc. And then, you know, to what degree does the government need to interfere in the economy? You know, the control of monopolies, for instance. Um, you know, private enterprise is, is a great thing, but you can't allow private monopolies to develop. So there is always a limited degree of, uh, of government involvement. And, you know, we have to restrict that to the bare minimum. I'll give you the last word, sir. I have actually nothing to add. <laughs> well, I think I think I, I think I want to thank you for the hospitality of us being here. It's my fifth time. I learn a lot, um, and it's actually very much worthwhile to come here because if you rely completely on the European media, which is basically an extension of the mainstream media in the United States, uh, then you've got it completely wrong, and that's why we come here to have it right. Well, I hope you would see here at CPAC the younger generation is looking to libertarian principles and volunteerism, and we want to absolutely maximize freedom with no limits, with, with no coercion from government. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. What is government? I guess that's that. And you know what? You're living in America right now, and you're not free. It means that we need to have a different philosophy. Why do they hate us? We need to... <laughs>